This is Tomo Ohira. And if you've never heard that name, you might recognize him from this VHS tape where he was showing people how to do combos on the SNES and Genesis versions of Street Fighter 2. But for the first generation of fighting game players, Tomo was him. He was the guy. One of the first, if not the first, nationally recognized great Street Fighter players in the United States. Mind you, this is in the early to mid 90s before this all truly blew up to what this all is now, but he was a catalyst for how fighting games are played today. If you talk to the old heads who knew Tomo at the time, they describe him as a Babe Ruthian style figure, one of the very best to ever do it at a time where nobody really understood what doing it was all about. And uh, between you and me, he even did it against black competitors, which is something that even Babe Ruth couldn't even say he did. Just saying. Today, Tomo is a legend in a very, very literal definition of the word. Gameplay from his peak is hard to come by. Accounts of his greatness can mostly be found through old IRC chats from the days of the Clinton administration, and there are hours worth of YouTube videos dedicated to telling the story of how good this guy truly was. But, as is always the case, the brightest stars always burned fastest. Tomo Ohira would spend a couple years at the peak of the mountain before achieving something only few at his skill level ever do. He retired, walking away on top on his own terms. A couple years ago, CNN caught up to Tomo for a very rare public appearance. They checked in with him and asked him where he went and why he stopped playing. And the long and short of it is that despite being the best, nobody is immune from feeling the slow, inevitable force of the grind. But eventually it went from, yes, I won, oh my god, I can't believe it, to, oh, okay, good, I didn't, I didn't lose today, so now I don't have to be upset tonight. And that's when I fell out of it. And this is where I come in, because I look at Tomo's story and think, he just like me, for real, for real. But, you know, he retired as one of the greatest of all time. I walked away from a relatively successful YouTube channel while also being hard stuck in the gold league of Street Fighter V. Let's call that a tomato-tomato type situation. Fighting games were one of the only topics that I felt knowledgeable enough to speak on from a place of authority. But since about 2020, I've really drifted away from the genre, putting maybe a couple hours total over the last few years into the games that used to take up a much, much larger portion of my life. And as my passion for fighting games died down, so did my urge to make videos and cool content. See, even though I put down the sticks, I never stopped looking for a hobby that would replace the fighting game-shaped hole in my heart. I picked up golf for a few months and had a great time doing that. And then I picked up poker and actually won a little bit of money before I lost it all right back. Yeah, and that was uh, kind of it. Uh, you know, I, I played some video games here and there, but, uh, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. So, um, what are you, what are you looking at? What? But truth be told, I really do miss fighting games. And as I look around the new landscape, it feels like I'm stepping out into a brand new world because after a two year break, it really does feel like the world has changed. New games have come, old games have gone. Leverless controllers feel like they've overtaken fight sticks as the dominant control system. And best of all, there are more creators than ever before telling you the stories about this weird and wacky genre that we all share a part of our souls with. After months of getting mentally prepared and days of cleaning my room, I am ready to come back. Jesus, I just cl So going forward, I'm gonna try to keep it interesting by working on some new videos that are and then aren't entirely about fighting games. Uh, I may mix some new writing techniques in or maybe get a collaboration going with other creators. 
anything to stop myself from burning out again. And by the way, while Tomo Ohira did step away from the scene to become a family man, he hasn't completely disappeared. Every so often, he surfaces for interviews with various individuals and organizations. As recently as mid-2023, he was sharing insights about his reign at the top and indulging about nostalgia around the old days. So, while it might be a little uh, ambitious to compare myself to one of the best who ever put a quarter into an arcade machine, it just goes to show that nobody is ever truly gone forever. We'll see you in the next video.